everyone, I'm Drew Pendis. As a superhero, I've met lots of monsters. Some of them are actually pretty nice. Anyway, let's check out some cool school episodes all about monsters. Here's one with me, where I fight the monster under the bed. And now it's time for another exciting adventure of Drew Pendis and his mighty pen ultimate. This time, Super Drew will battle the monster under the bed. It all started one evening when Drew's nightlight went out. Drew was trying really hard to be brave, but then he heard a noise. Ah! Drew hid under the covers. If there's any monsters out there, you better get out. I mean it. Ah! Wait a second. This stupendous stupendous isn't afraid of the dark. Drew grabbed his pen ultimate and began to sketch. First, he drew some night vision goggles. Cool. It was kind of dark in here. Next, I'll need a cape so these monsters know that they're dealing with a real superhero. And I'll need a belt that can eject a net for monster capture. OK, monsters, you better hide, because I'm Super Drew, and I'm coming for you. Drew decided he should save his family first. So he flew into his little brother's room and shined a light under the bed. His little brother woke up. Hmm. Hey, Drew. What are you doing in here? I'm fighting monsters. Shh. <laughs> monsters? <laughs> Suddenly, Drew heard a noise. It was coming from down the hall. Drew jumped out, and he cast his net. Gotcha. Oops. Turned out it was just his pet schnauzer, Mr. Hot Dog. Sorry, Mr. Hot Dog. OK, no monsters here. Drew flew down the hall to his parents' room, but he didn't see any monster activity there. Hmm, the monsters seem to be one step ahead of me. Or maybe they're all hiding because they're scared. Drew plugged in a super monster deflector nightlight for his parents before he left, just to be safe. Huh? It was getting late, and Drew knew he had to defeat the monsters before morning. He flew through the house, casting his monster net and yelling really loudly so the monsters knew he meant business. Ah! He looked in the kitchen. Aha! No monsters. He looked in the garage. Ah! Nope. He looked in his closet. Nothing there except a mess. But where else was he supposed to throw all his toys? Drew threw back the curtains and yelled. Aha! But there was nothing there either. It was time to be brave and look under the bed, the most notorious hideout for monsters. Super Drew took a deep breath and he looked. Ahem. <clears throat> I said Drew takes a deep breath and he looks. Hello? He takes a deep breath, he looks. He saw it! There, in the darkest corner of the bed, he saw the monster! Hey, Drew. Nice to meet you. I'm your bed monster. My what? Your bed monster. I live under your bed and stand guard, making sure you're always safe and sound. Huh. But it gets pretty lonely down here sometimes. You want to play video games? Yeah. So, Drew and his bed monster played games until the monster said, Drew. Whoa, you sound just like my dad. Drew, wake up. You're going to be late for school. Huh? Drew, why were you sleeping with your head under the covers? Drew looked around. He saw his monster fighting superhero suit, and he knew it wasn't just a dream. He had met a real life monster from under the bed. He was super cool, though, so that's nice. And the moral of the story, boys and girls, is don't be afraid of the dark. And if you find a monster under the bed, he's probably just bored and wants to play video games. Well, hello, children, and welcome to my class. I'm Mr. Hester, and this is History of the Entire World Class. Oh, <laughs> let's get started. Today's class is about something wonderful, something a truly spectacular, something so painfully amazing that it makes my head feel like it might uh, explode. And the subject for today is knights in uh, shining armor. Oh, don't worry, girls. There's stuff in this lesson for you, too. Knights in shining armor, you see, are some of the coolest parts of the Middle Ages. What are the Middle Ages, Mr. Hister, you might ask? Oh, well, I'll tell you if you let me, anxious Annie. The Middle Ages, also known as medieval times, was a period of our history where things were very, 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 very cool, you see. Uh, there were castles instead of homes, horses instead of cars, 
farms instead of grocery stores, swords instead of guns, kings instead of presidents, and uh, knights in shining armor instead of police officers. I know, it was pretty wild. You see, and these knights in shining armor, you see, would work for the king. And the king would say, I'll make sure the kingdom, the kingdom is her, uh, the, uh, the, the place where everyone lived, you see. So the, so the king would say, I'll make sure the kingdom is in order, knights in shining armor. And um, the, uh, the knights, you see, would, uh, would, would, would do that. Oh, they would make sure everyone was behaving and make sure everyone was, was doing their job and doing their homework and, and not getting attacked by dragons or, or, or just very large lizards who breathe fire sometimes. Well, in their spare time, you see, these knights uh, would, these, these knights in shining armor, you see, would find girlfriends. Uh, but back in their time, the girlfriends of knights, you see, were called princesses. They were very beautiful. Very, 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 very good looking girls. Uh, quite often at the top of the huge tower with no doors. And they, uh, the, the knights in shining armor, would uh, take them uh, horseback riding. Uh, they'd go to places like the beach and have a picnic because the knights in shining armor were very good looking as well. As are all of you. Good-looking kids, as they say. And uh, the coolest part about all this, you see, is that the country of England, you see, uh, they still have kings and queens and, and princesses and princes. But they don't wear armor anymore. No, 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 no. You see, they, they just wear these tall, fuzzy hats. They look a little bit like pillows. Or pillows you could... You could use for taking a, a well-deserved nap. You see, because you're working so hard. <sighs> oh, well, oh, well, huh. That's the bell. That's all the time we have today. So, oh, we'll see you next time. Come back now, okay? Uh. My school project is about witches. This is a witch. We know it's a witch because of a few things. First, the pointy black hat. Hey, give me back my hat. Here you go. Thank you. Most, if not all witches, have a pointy hat. But not all people with pointy hats are witches. The next thing we look for in a witch is the green skin. Don't you look at my skin. I'll be green if I want to. But not all things with green skin are witches. <coughs> Another thing we look for in a witch is a long crooked nose with a wart on top. You leave my nose alone. I like it. There's nothing wrong with a long nose, because not everything with a long nose is a witch. And last, we know it's a witch if it's doing magic, especially while riding a broomstick. And mixing things in a cauldron. And so, in conclusion, if she has a pointy hat, green skin, a long crooked nose with a wart on top, and she's doing magic while riding a broomstick, well then, you are correct. Your sister is definitely a witch. Hi kids, I've got a brand new story for you today. This is the true story of Beauty and the Beast. Once upon a time, there was a really sweet girl named Belle. I get to be Belle. So anyway, Belle, I mean I, lived with my dad and two sisters. My dad sold cosmetics door to door. You know, makeup and lipstick, that sort of thing. One day, I was packing up a huge order. 25 bottles of shampoo, 100 bars of soap, 10 things of curl goop, 
Ugh, it was a lot. Who could have ordered all this stuff? A giant poodle? <laughs> My dad had gotten a wicked bad flu, and I had to make the delivery. And I didn't even know his route, so I had to use a GPS to get there. Turn right at the very scary looking gate. Continue past creepy gargoyle statues. You have arrived at your destination, the beast's house. Huh? Hello? Who's there? <sighs> okay. That, that sounded like a monster or something. Time to go! <gasps> what do you want here? Oh, there, Chewbacca. Easy, easy. I I'm just delivering the hair care products that you ordered. Oh, fantastic! Uh, <clears throat> do you have the curl enhancer and the cocoa butter soap? I, I totally prefer cocoa butter. Great for sun damaged fur. Oh, hey, buddy, you're doing that wrong! Here, let me help. <laughs> oh, that's much better! Uh, hey, actually, I, I'm looking for an assistant. Uh, you aren't looking for a job, are you? Well, my family did need the money, so I took the job. It actually wasn't so bad. The beast gave me a sweet room, like a room for a princess. I had a closet full of amazing dresses. Oh, and there was a state-of-the-art home theater. <laughs> oh, and a full-time pizza chef. That's right, kids, pizza 24-7. Ah, non-stop pizza. It was a pretty cool job. I did miss my dad a lot, but we Skyped like all the time. Hi, Dad, it's so good to see you. Yeah, I'm doing great. I love my room. Get out of here! <laughs> I was becoming really good friends with the Beast. What's your real name? Actually, uh, it's Harry. <sighs> You've broken your cup again, Harry. You have to be dainty with teacups, like this. Thanks, Belle. <clears throat> what would I do without you? Belle, will you ma- <laughs> So of course, that's when my sisters call. Dad is really sick, they tell me, and I need to leave right away. What was Harry gonna ask me? Boy, talk about a cliffhanger. The Beast was just about to ask me something pretty important, but I had to hurry home to take care of my dad. I made him chicken soup, I read to him, and told him jokes, and he was feeling better in no time. I told my sisters all about Harry, and they were super rude. They called him all sorts of mean names, like Furball, Ugly Harry Guy, Jabba the Mutt, You probably have lice. Deep down, I knew they were just jealous. I was having a really good time with Harry. He was nice to me. We had so much fun together. And did I mention the nonstop pizza party? Hello. <laughs> he said I was being selfish and that I should just stay home. I said, okay, fine, I'd stay, but just for a little longer. I wrote a message to Harry and asked my sister to please give it to the postman. I wrote, dear Harry, Please forgive me, but I must stay for one more week. See you soon. Yours truly, Belle. Meanwhile. Dear Harry, get it? Cause you're so hairy. Please forgive me, but I must stay forever. See you soon. Just kidding. See you never. Not yours. Belle? P.S. You are Harry. Oh. When the beast, I mean Harry, cried, I felt his sadness from miles away. I didn't know exactly what, but I knew something was terribly wrong. Hey, I don't know what you did, but I know you did something terrible and I'm gonna fix it. You, 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 you mean bad sisters. Oh, I, I'm not really good at coming up with insults, but that's because I'm nice. I found Harry nearly smothered in a mountain of dirty Kleenex, whimpering like a hurt puppy. Oh, I went to hug him and tell him that I was back and that everything was gonna be okay. But the sight of him so sad made me so sad. And one little tear fell. 
And you're gonna wanna go slow motion in this because what happened next is amazing. My tear falls on Harry's face and he turns into a prince. Yep, a prince. And not a hairy prince, a really cute and handsome prince. <laughs> Seriously handsome. And that's when he told me about the curse. He had been a vain man and interested only in money and his looks. Then a witch cast a spell on him to teach him a lesson. She turned him into a beast. The spell could only be reversed when he fell in love. The catch was, she had to love me back. And she totally does. And I do. And that, kids, is true love. Total bonus that he turned into a prince. Oh, double bonus, because we got an ice cream bar for a wedding present. <laughs> yep, we had a fairy tale ending. Just eating pizza and having some ice cream. Chillin'. Me and not so Harry, the prince. <laughs> the end. Well, that was really fun. My project is about trolls. These are trolls. Some trolls are big and others are small, but they all seem to have similar features. Trolls are often very large, smelly, and dirty. This most likely comes from their unhealthy diet of eating only mountain goats. Their skin is very tough and has many shades of gray in its coloring. When trolls are sleeping, they can often be mistaken for a pile of rocks. Their hair is made of bushes and trees, as this helps them hide when they don't want to be seen. A troll with a great hairdo can look like a nice place for a mountain goat to rest and get some shade. Bah! Not so in this situation. Sorry, Mr. Goat. Nah, it's okay. Trolls' personalities are a funny thing. They think very highly of themselves, as if they are the smartest in all the land. But in reality, they are not the smartest in all the land. Hey, I heard that. Trolls are also very greedy. They don't like to share, and they will get into fights with one another about silly little things. Bah! It is this selfishness that prevents trolls from ever being truly happy. So, don't be a troll, be happy, and always be nice to mountain goats. My project is all about dragons. Dragons come in all different shapes and sizes, but all of them are awesome. They have wings, so they can fly through the air. They can even do tricks. Some dragons are really cute, like Toothless from How to Train Your Dragon. Aw, he doesn't have any teeth. On the other hand, in Sleeping Beauty, Maleficent turns into a dragon with a whole bunch of teeth. It's probably tougher to use a toothbrush. Some dragons breathe fire. They do this to protect their gold or because they just ate a bunch of spicy chicken wings. Why does he even need all that gold? To buy more spicy chicken wings? Other dragons breathe ice. That's handy for when your ice cream is starting to melt. Thanks. Some dragons just have bad breath. That's the scariest breath of all. Maybe he needs to brush his teeth too. There are dragons that are big enough for you to ride on. And then there are dragons that are small enough to ride on you. Most kids love dragons. My older sister even likes some called Imagine Dragons. They don't look like regular dragons. I think they're radioactive or something, like Godzilla. Godzilla likes to step on buildings. He's not a really a dragon though, more of a dinosaur. We'll talk about dinosaurs later. For now, back to dragons. Dragons are used as symbols for a lot of things. Knights used to have dragons on their shields. During the Chinese New Year, you can see a dragon dance. No, not that kind of dragon dance. That's better. Some dragons are magic, but some are not. This list is starting to drag on. So in conclusion, dragons live in castles and lighthouses up on mountains and down in caves. They can be cuter than a kitten and friendlier than a dog. Dragons can fly you to school so you don't have to take the bus. And that's why I should have a dragon as a pet. Well, hey there, boys and girls. It's me, Crafty Carol, here today with a brand new craft here at Cool School. Oh, my goodness. I think you just 
put the sound barrier, a.k.a. my eardrums, but <laughs> I don't mind because that just means you're excited about crafts. And we're excited about yelling! Yeah! <laughs> okay, are you also excited about dragons? <gasps> I certainly hope not. I was thinking more like a cool dragon from Maleficent or How to Train Your Dragon, you know, one like that. Okay, so we're going to make our very own dragon craft with these supplies right here. Oh, well, I was yeah. kind of hoping we'd make a real life dragon that breathes fire, but this, this will be good too. Well, this dragon will still be really cool. It just won't be super dangerous. And it won't breathe fire. I can breathe fire. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> My goodness, it's getting hot in here oh, with yeah. all the fire-breathing kids. <laughs> so uh, I think we better make this dragon craft before we all melt. <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm not even allowed to play with fire. Okay, in truth, I can't really breathe fire. Yeah, yeah he made it up. Well, yeah. that's probably a good thing because then you'd be super scary to talk to. I can tell what you want to know right now is what we need to make this craft. Yes, yeah, yeah. so <laughs> need to know. So we're going to need an egg box, Ooh. regular cardboard egg box there. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You're going to need paint, some color paper, tissue paper, glue, you need a stapler, two sticks, got these right here, and uh, you know, just some fun little, uh, little doodads and things. Oh, I like doodads. We already painted our egg box, we're saving some time, painted it black, like Toothless or Maleficent, and we already cut out and attached a piece for the eyes, wow. See? just like so. Now, that? you can give your dragon any kind of eyes you want. Let's give our dragon googly eyes. <laughs> I think that's an excellent idea. <laughs> so I uh, just happen to have some Whoa. right here. Okay, oh. so just attach those. Oh my goodness, we're already we're already cooking with gas. That's a googly yeah. dragon, all right. Googly eyes right there. I think that dragon also needs a tongue oh. so he can taste yeah. his, oh, uh, yes. his pizza. So I'm just gonna put it in there. What about ears? Like long ones like mine. Oh, oh yes, yeah, you can do ears. Yeah. Oh, oh or a bow tie, because oh. bow ties are cool. <laughs> oh, what's a dragon without a bow tie? Or a hat. Or a hat. Or, a hat. or you could do a little you hat. Do a hat. Okay. Oh, oh, what about a mustache? Or shark fin. Oh, or a suit of armor. Or a ninja suit. Oh. And a cape. Or a jetpack. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, these are all really awesome ideas. I gave our dragon a little tongue and dragon mane. That kind of looks like a shark's fin. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be scared of this. I'm if I were swimming scary. in the ocean and saw this coming, yeah. I'd get out of the water. So next step, we take our tissue paper here. We've got, yeah. this is gonna be the dragon's body. And it's Ooh. super simple. Just Ooh, put it up wow. in there. Wow, holy so cow, look at We're that kinda one. almost there, you guys. You know what we can do next? Oh, oh eat ice cream? Oh, huh? well, that's not what I was going to say, but oh. good guess, I do love ice cream. Oh, hey, 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 Crafty Carol. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever heard this? I scream. You scream. Ah, uh, we all scream for ice cream. Ah! I love ice cream. If a dragon ate ice cream, I think it would melt. Yeah. I wonder if a dragon ate an egg, if it would automatically be a fried egg. Okay, I think we're ready for the last step. So we just take the other end of our mm -hmm. tissue paper here, and we're gonna wrap it around this stick. Pretty simple so far, and oh, we're gonna yeah. staple it. And then you take your other stick, uh -huh. yeah. and stick it right in there. <laughs> oh, and, that looks oh, like it hurts. And you know what, I almost didn't notice. We got ourselves a dragon here. Boys and girls, this dragon craft is super duper easy and super fun. My cool school project is all about monsters. A lot of people think monsters are scary, but most of them aren't. Unless you include my little brother when he doesn't brush his teeth and he breathes on you. Ew! But I think most monsters are pretty cool. First of all, what do monsters look like? Some are tall, some are short. Some monsters are super cute, some are less cute. Some look furry. Some look fuzzy, and some monsters just look funny. Monsters can come in super handy, like when you need a tissue. Achoo! Gesundheit. Thanks. Or when you have a bug problem. Delicious. Or if you just need a cool sidekick. Thanks. And when you get tired, 
They're like giant stuffed animals. You might think that monsters like to hide under beds and in closets and scare people. Not true. Monsters actually live in trash cans, castles, lakes, and snowy mountains. Sometimes they live in your pocket, like Pokemon. Yeah, in Japan we're called pocket monsters. Hey, you're only supposed to say your name. Oops, I mean... Pika Pika! Monsters like to go to school, eat dessert, mm, cookie, cuddle, and sing. Some monsters just like to watch TV. Oh, and they love to dance. They even have their own dance called the Monster Mash. It the Monster Mash. The most important thing to know about monsters is that you should never be afraid of them. But just in case you're ever kind of scared, just remember you can totally defeat the monster. Here are a few ways. Number one, turn on your nightlight. Ah! Monsters hate nightlights. Number two, yell boo. Ah! That works every time. Number three, throw snowballs. Ah! And number four, just replace their cookies with yucky stuff. Mmm, cookie. Ah! Mushroom! So basically, monsters are super cool and awesome and fun and not scary at all. And if I got to have my very own monster, I would name her Frankenstein. And we would play hilarious pranks on my brother like all the time. Ew. That would be so sweet. So what's your favorite monster? And if you had your own monster, what would you name it? Hi guys, it's me, Harry. Guess what? It's time for the story circle here at Cool School and today, we're gonna hear a Halloween story. Isn't that right? Yes, it is. Hey it guys, this is Brittany and Austin from the Knife Knolls. Adriana's here. And Kylan. We are excited to be a part of Story Circle. Harry, do you like Halloween? No. I love Halloween. Well, that's good, we do too, which is why we're gonna be reading The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Uh, I hope it's not too scary, uh, you know, uh, for Kai. <laughs> Good thinking. We'll make sure it's not too scary. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Are you? This, this guy's ready. <laughs> Once upon a time, long ago, there was a very spooky town called Sleepy Hollow. It was spooky because it was dark and shadowy, and the wind made a noise through the trees like this. Ooh. Everyone would go to the big Sleepy Halloween Carnival. All the folks in Sleepy Hollow were excited for the carnival, but one young man named Ichabod Crane was the most excited. He was planning to first win the jack-o'-lantern carving contest and second ask Katrina, the coolest girl in the town, to marry him. It was going to be an epic night. Halloween came and Ichabod practiced carving pumpkins all day. There were funny pumpkins, cool pumpkins, pretty pumpkins, and scary pumpkins. He also practiced proposing. Will you marry me? Wouldst thou join me in holy matrimony? Will you be my wife? Marry me. Finally, it was time to go to the carnival. Ichabob had carved some really awesome jack-o'-lanterns, but he picked out the very scariest pumpkin as it was sure to win first prize. He was just so darn excited. He was rushing out the door when he slipped on some pumpkin guts and slipped, whoosh! When he landed, his prize-winning jack-o'-lantern was stuck on his head. Oh no! He couldn't get the pumpkin off his head without breaking it and messing up the scary face he carved. So he decided he'd just wear the pumpkin to the carnival. He heard some of the neighborhood children skipping down the path on their way to the carnival. He called out, Hello there, children. But the pumpkin over his mouth made him sound kind of like this. Hello there, children. The kids took one look at the scary pumpkin's head and... <laughs> well, that's odd. Guess they're excited it's Halloween. The children ran ahead to the carnival, telling everyone they saw that there was a man with a pumpkin for a head chasing them. Then Ichabod heard old Mr. Winkle headed his way. He knew it was him because Mr. Winkle whistled a happy tune wherever he went and his horse, Irving, always wore a bridle covered in jingle bells. Hello, Mr. Winkle. Can you help me? I seem to have lost my head. Mr. Winkle stopped whistling and started yelling. Ah! Ah! so loudly that Irving got spooked, and when a horse gets spooked, they go wild. He got up and ran away yelling, Pumpkin Man, it's a headless pumpkin man. He ran straight to the carnival to warn everyone that there was a scary man with a pumpkin for a head coming their way. Ichabod had no way of seeing what he looked like, but he realized now that he must look pretty scary, so he decided he would just let people know straight away that it was he, Ichabod Crane, and not a scary pumpkin head. He rode up to the carnival and he said, Hello, it is I! But before he could finish, the townsfolk all panicked. Ah, the hell is horse man! Off with his pumpkin head! Yeah, hit the road, Jack Lantern! 
He stole my horse. I say return him into pumpkin pie. That was yelled by the baker, none other than Katrina Von Tassel, the very lady that Ichabod was hoping to marry. The angry mob was closing in on him. Wait, it's, it's me, Ichabod. I'm Ichabod Crane. Did he say he ate Ichabod Crane? I was gonna marry that man. She charged forth, waving her rolling pin in the air, and she whacked the mean old pumpkin man on his pumpkin head with her rolling pin. The pumpkin cracked open, and there was Ichabod Crane. Ichabod! Hi, Katrina. Ichabod explained to everyone how he had slipped and gotten the jack-o'-lantern stuck on his head, how he didn't want to ruin it, and had just been looking for some help getting it off in one piece so he could still win first prize in the pumpkin carving contest. I never meant to scare anyone, I promise. I just worked so hard on that jack-o'-lantern. The townsfolk were just happy they didn't have to worry about a real pumpkin head man. So they forgave Ichabod for being scary, and he forgave them for trying to turn him into a pumpkin pie. He entered the pumpkin carving contest with new jack-o'-lanterns freshly carved. It wasn't a scary jack-o'-lantern this time. It just had words carved into it, and it said, Will you marry me? Ichabod didn't win first prize, but Katrina liked it a lot. It turned out to be a very happy Halloween in Sleepy Hollow. The end. Boo! <laughs> Hi, boys and girls. It's me, Miss Booksy. Did I scare you? <laughs> well, are you ready to hear a scary Halloween story? <gasps> Don't worry, it's not too scary. It's more like fun and silly. <laughs> well, gather around because I'm about to read a very special version of Sleepy Hollow. I'm Katrina Von Tassel, and I live in a quiet town called Sleepy Hollow. The town is full of silly ghosts and ghouls. <laughs> These guys are real pests. Sleepy Hollow is the best place to celebrate Halloween. <laughs> Not only because of the ghosts, The main reason is the town is numero uno for trick-or-treating. All of the neighbors give out the best candy. I can't wait. <laughs> Who's there? Boo. Boo who? Don't cry. It's only me, Ichabod. Seriously, Ichabod, that was so candy corny. <laughs> Are you ready to go trick-or-treating? Yeah, let's do it. So off we went. Trick-or-treating was so much fun. My arm is getting sore from carrying all this candy. Mine too. Let's go home so we can split it up. Yeah, sweet and sours, chocolates, chewy things, and then the gross stuff. Yuck, like candy corn and who eats raisins on Halloween? Ew. Ah, hey, watch it. Why, hello. Looks like you did very well this year. May I take a closer look at your candy? Yeah, sure. I guess. Hmm, looks like you've got my favorites. Chocolates, chewies, and my horse loves the sweet and sours. Don't you, Mr. Horse? No, sir. I don't like it. Eek! Uh, that horse talks! Uh, scariest thing ever! Katrina, we should get out of here. Yeah, uh, nice meeting you, whoever you are. <laughs> well, that was weird. Let's go home, pronto. Phew, <laughs> we made it home. <laughs> Wait a minute, what happened to all my good candy? All I have in here is raisins and candy corn, yuck. <gasps> we were duped. The person on that horse took all my favorites too. What do we do? I know exactly what to do. We'll have to catch that candy crook and teach him a lesson. Oh, I wonder what Katrina and Ichabod will do. Hi, boys and girls. Last time in Sleepy Hollow, Katrina and Ichabod were going to catch whoever took away all their favorite Halloween candies. Okay, are you ready? Let's see what they're up to now. Okay, Ichabod, the only way to catch this candy crook is to remember what he looked like. Let's think. I remember the suspect wore a long woolly hat. Okay, I also remember seeing gray hair. There was a sloppy pumpkin head. And this person had a strange voice. And they rode a talking horse. Ugh, that scary Mr. Horse, who can it be? Let's go back out and catch this thief. We need to find townsfolk who have gray hair and are avid equestrians. You know, horse riders. 
And off they went, back into the cold and windy night, knocking on the doors of people who had gray hair. First stop, Red Riding Hood's grandma's house. Oh, hello, children. It's a little late for trick-or-treating. Here, how about some mints? Uh, no thanks. But can you answer a quick question? When was the last time you rode a horse? Oh, well, let's see. It must have been about, well, 50 years ago. Well, that's right. I remember oh. I was just okay. about to go. Okay. Happy Halloween. <laughs> that's definitely not our suspect. Let's visit Cinderella's evil stepmother. What do you want? I'm all out of candy. Oh, uh, we're not here to trick or treat. Yes, we're just here to ask you a friendly question. All right, fine, but make it quick. When was the last time you rode a horse? And where were you approximately at 7.30 tonight? Can't you count? That's two questions. First, I haven't been on a horse since I was eight years old. And second, I was home watching Wheel of Fortune. Now goodbye. Who else in this town has gray hair? I know of one more person. Who's there? Trick, Trick or, or treat, treat Rumpelstiltskin. Rumpelstiltskin. Oh, uh, uh, hello. What's that in your hair? Oh, this? Uh, just some pumpkin stuff. But here, I've got lots of candy. Take some and go home. Hey, where did you get that? Oh, uh, you know, around town, different places. Mm. Wait a minute, woolly hat. Gray hair. Pumpkin guts. You are so busted, Rumpelstiltskin. You took all of our candy tonight. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. I just uh, uh, ran out of candy and, and needed more to, to give out to the trick-or-treaters. Yeah, that's it. That is no excuse. Yeah, it's a totally lame-o excuse. Stealing candy is not allowed in Sleepy Hollow. Hey, it looks like you caught the candy thief. Nice work, kids. Thanks, officer. <laughs> I didn't mean any trouble. Sorry, Rumpy. Rules are rules. For stealing candy, you gotta wear this lovely holiday sweater for the next three months. Oh man! Hooray! Halloween case of the candy crook solved. The end. I am so happy that they caught that candy crook. All along, it was Rumpelstiltskin. Go figure. Hmm. Well, Katrina and Ichabod sure did. <laughs> Hello, boys and girls. Are you all ready for a Halloween nursery rhyme? I hope it's not too scary. Don't worry. I don't think it will be. It's about mummies. No, not mummies. Silly kids, mummies. Or monkeys. Oops, I wasn't supposed to say that. OK, let's see what happens. Here we go, a Halloween nursery rhyme. All about mummies. Let's meet the mummies, shall we? Mummy number one, two, three, four and five. Every night they sleep wrapped up in their sheets as peaceful mummies like to do. But on Halloween, they don't go to sleep. They go out and trick or treat. But after trick or treating and eating gummy worms, chocolates and candy corn, they are bouncing off the walls. <laughs> Mummy number one was so full of energy. He jumped off the bed and hit his poor little head, unraveling his bandages. Oh no! Mummy number one said, Ouch! This boo-boo hurts! Ah! Mama Mummy came to their bed and decided to call the doctor. Hello, Dr. Tut? My little mommy number one has fallen off his bed and hit his head. Dr. Tut replied, Tell those mummies there is no jumping on the bed. But all through the night, those monkeys, I mean mummies, kept jumping. <laughs> number two. Number three. Number four and number five jumped and jumped on their bed. Mama Mummy had to call Dr. Tut five times that night. 
That's what candy can do to you. Five mummies with boo-boos on their head and a bed with a big mess of unraveled bandages. And after all that jumping, the mummies got very tired and finally fell asleep. Mama Mummy went to turn off their light and said, That's a wrap! Good night, mummies, and happy Halloween! All right then, now for the rhyming part. Five little monkeys jumping on the bed. One fell down and hit his head. Mama called the doctor and the doctor said, No more mummies, I mean monkeys, jumping on the bed. Hey there, boys and girls, Crafty Carol here with a brand new craft for you right here at Cool School. Today's craft is a super awesome one and it's very, might I say, winterific. You know that I love snow. It's one of my top 100 favorite things. You know, I love snow. I love the beach. I love crafting. I love glitter. But snow is right, it's right up there. It's one of my most awesome favorite things. So what are we making today? We are going to be making a Yeti hat aka an abominable snowman hat. You're gonna be looking pretty tough on the playground. No one messes with the abominable snowman, oh no. So what do you need to make this craft? Well, I've got a fuzzy winter hat, I've got two pieces of felt, light blue and a sort of sparkly white, I've got giant googly eyes, scissors, and a hot glue gun. Hot glue guns can be pretty serious business, so be careful. Get a grown up. You know, the abominable snowman is from the Himalayas, and that's like all the way on the other side of the world from where I am right now, so I wonder what time it is. Hmm. It's probably craft o'clock! So let's get started making this craft! So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my light blue felt. I'm gonna glue it onto the hat, like right in the middle there. Cutting a little sort of half circle here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because it's not like the abominable snowman is, is some like put together nice neat preppy boy. He's pretty wild. So I'm gonna try that out and see how I like that. Well, that looks pretty cool. Get this little extra piece of felt here. I don't know what we're gonna use this for. If I'm doing like a Wild West sort of sort of costume where I have a blue mustache. So what am I gonna do here? I'm gonna stick this felt inside so that I have a barrier between the sides of the hat because I don't want the hat to get glued shut because then I won't be able to put it on my head. So what good is a hat if you can't put it on your head? Oof, here we go. I'm doing this kind of fast because I don't want the hot glue to dry. Ah, it's drying, it's drying, it's drying, no! Smerge it onto there. Look in, it's all supposed to fall over. Stay put. I'm trying to work here. So that's there. I'm gonna let that dry a little bit. Put this felt back there. Oh, I don't need that anymore. Okie dokie, so it's time to do some Yeti teeth. Yeah, some people kind of lump it in there with Bigfoot, the Chupacabra, or the Skunk Ape, or the Yowie. I've never seen a Yeti in real life, but I'm going to believe the legend that they have pretty big teeth. So we're gonna make some big chompers here. The teeth are easy, and we've got so much felt here that we can we can make lots of mistakes. So there are a few different words for the Yeti. Of course, we've got the abominable snowman. That's one. And in Nepal, some people call it a mete. I'm probably not pronouncing that right. If anybody from Nepal or from around the Himalayas is watching, tell me if I pronounce that correctly. Mete? Mete, I think? If I ever meet the abominable snowman, I don't want to make a fool of myself. Um, you can just call me Steve. So I've got the teeth here. I'm gonna cut further up so that I have a little wiggle room. Just trust me. Trust me on that. Alright, so we've got our little front here. I'm gonna flip it over. Let's get our glue gun here. And just inside, I'm gonna glue the teeth, glitter face down, because I want the glitter to be, you know, something that you see. Let's stick that in there. Oh my gosh, this is looking really good, I love it. So now, we need some Yeti eyes. Let's glue these googly eyes on. There's one, I just went for it. It doesn't matter if you don't get the eyes perfectly lined up, just making some crazy eyes. Oh look, there's Crafty Carol wearing a totally regular hat. Not, check it out. 
got an amazing Yeti hat. I don't think I want to call it an abominable snowman hat because abominable means bad. It means like disgusting, loathsome, odious. It's right, eh? Checked a thesaurus. Got it from Miss Boxy's library. And this Yeti's probably a pretty cool guy. So, amazing Yeti, not abominable snowman. Oh, and I almost forgot to tell you the reason I made this Yeti hat is I got inspired by Drew. You know, the amazing, stupendous Drew Pendus. He told me a story about how he went to the Himalayas and had an adventure with a Yeti. Get ready for a brand new adventure of Drew Pendus and his mighty penultimate. Today's adventure is Drew and the Abominable Snowman. Drew was at cool school learning all about Mount Everest, the tallest mountain on earth. As he listened, he doodled pictures of himself climbing to the top of the mountain where he would yell stuff like, Hey, I can see your bald spot. <laughs> and then listen for the echo. I can see your bald spot. <laughs> and then ski all the way down, setting the world record for the fastest skiing ever. Then his teacher said, Mount Everest is home to many species of animals, even the endangered snow leopard. Aww. But it's also home to the mythical Yeti, ah! AKA the abominable snowman. The abominable snowman? Sounds dangerous. I bet that's what's eating all the snow leopards. That sounds like a job for the stupendous stupendous. Uh, I mean, may I go to the restroom? Drew grabbed the bathroom keys and ran out. Okay, I'll need to fly to Nepal and then land on Everest. So I'll draw airplane wings onto my suit. And a jet engine. Oh, and a coat. It's gonna be cold. Drew was ready for blast off. He jetted out of school and halfway across the world to Mount Everest. Drew saw some hunters. Hey guys. Shh! Sorry, what you doing? Hunting yetis? Yeah, be quiet, kid. Oh cool, me too! I'm gonna save the baby snow leopards from these scary yetis. Whatever, kid. Good luck. You too, see ya! Shh! Sorry. Drew trekked up the mountain looking for signs of a yeti. He looked to the left, he looked to the right, he looked up, he looked down! Aha! Now I've got you, Mr. Yeti the Abominable Snowman. I need a giant net so I can capture him. A netty for the Yeti. <laughs> With his net in hand, Drew followed the tracks. Hey, the footprints stop here. That must mean... Ah! Ah! Drew pulled himself together and cast his Yeti net. Gotcha! The hunters came running. Hey, good job, kid. You got him. Now we'll take him to our science lab so we can experiment on him. Ooh. You mean to see why he's so mean and why he's always eating snow leopards? <laughs> Yetis don't eat snow leopards, kid. They're not dangerous at all. They're like giant teddy bears. Drew thought fast. Being mean to animals is bad. Giant teddy bears are good. Drew looked at the Yeti. There was an <laughs> abominably big snow tear rolling down his furry Yeti cheeks. The Yeti is not the bad guy. You're the bad guy. You probably hurt the baby snow leopards too. Yeah. We're actually evil math scientists! <laughs> <laughs> Suddenly, Drew had a brand new mission. I'm the stupendous stupendous, and I'll save the Yeti. Drew pulled out his penultimate and began to draw. Get your hands off of us, kid. Yeah, let go. Stretch your arms, activate. Whoa! Drew's arms zoomed way out till the hunters were dangling over the side of the mountain. Do you promise to leave the Yetis alone? We, we promise. promise. And do you promise you'll never hurt another animal as long as you live? Yes. Call me sir. Yes, yes sir. Drew set them down at the base of the mountain. <laughs> I can see your bold spot. <laughs> Stretch your arms, deactivate. Drew helped the captured Yeti out of his net. The Yeti grabbed Drew and gave him an abominably Ooh. huge snow hug. Oh no, more hunters? The Yeti shook his head and smiled. It was his Yeti family. There was Mom Yeti and three little Yeti kids. And to top it off, they had a pet baby snow leopard. Take care of the other animals up here, okay guys? I gotta get back to school. I was supposed to be in the bathroom this whole time. Drew flew back to cool school. Finally, I've been waiting forever. The end. 
And the moral of the story is, don't believe everything you hear about Yetis, and try not to take too long in the bathroom. Someone might be waiting. <laughs>